Yeah, the key points of my discussion was uh, the varying uh, implementation of uh, thoracic radiotherapy in uh, limited stage small cell lung cancer. I also discussed uh, the concept of consolidation radiotherapy in extensive stage small cell lung cancer and then uh, prophylactic cranial irradiation or PCI. So the main topic of my, my, my talk was uh, the, the varying practice when it comes to the thoracic radiotherapy in limited stage small cell lung cancer. Uh, we uh, all agree that it is of value, that it provides uh, a, a significantly longer survival for these patients. Uh, I think we also agree that uh, the radiotherapy should start as early as possible. But when it comes to the schedules of radiotherapy, uh, there's a large variation. <clears throat> there's one trial uh, published back in 99 that shows that twice daily uh, radiotherapy is uh, the most effective schedule, but it has been uh, poorly implemented because it caused uh, uh, quite a lot of toxicity. And uh, we see that uh, <clears throat> maybe one third of the patients actually receive uh, twice daily radiotherapy. Uh, I showed data from uh, one of our studies where we showed that uh, we have been able to implement it um, much more successfully in Norway. In 2018, more than 90% of our patients uh, received twice daily radiotherapy. <clears throat> and we see that in the same time period, survival uh, in this uh, group of patients has uh, increased uh, significantly. So we believe that it's feasible and that it can be offered to uh, pa patients of old age, patients with uh, comorbidity and also patients with stage 3 disease. When you look at population-based studies from other countries, we can see that there's probably a selection when it comes to uh, choosing the patient to actually offer this treatment. I then uh, uh, also uh, uh, showed results from uh, two trials that have been published uh, not so long ago, uh, showing that uh, um, the high dose radiotherapy given as uh, one in, in one daily fraction does not prolong survival. We've been waiting quite a long time for those data. We had an indication from the European CONVERT trial, and now we see also from the American trial that it's not superior. Maybe it's uh, equally uh, effective, but it's not superior. And then the last uh, part of that discussion was uh, showing data from a Chinese trial <clears throat> and uh, from a trial that we did in the Nordics. In both trials, we have accelerated uh, the radiotherapy uh, by reducing the treatment time. And in the Chinese uh, trial, they g gave one uh, fraction per day in a higher dose, and they see that it uh, uh, at least uh, prolongs uh, progression-free survival. Uh, and then we need to wait for the survival data to mature. In our trial, we uh, had another strategy. We gave two fractions per day, uh, the supposedly most toxic uh, uh, regimen, uh, but to a higher dose. And we see that 60 gray in 40 fractions uh, significantly improves uh, median overall survival and two-year overall survival. And uh, next year, we will uh, present the final data from that trial, and uh, I think uh, that will be quite interesting. The last uh, point uh, was uh, regarding toxicity, because uh, uh, dysphagia caused by the radiation-induced esophagitis has been uh, uh, one of the major concerns about the twice daily schedule. And we see that in all uh, recent trials, there's much less toxicity, uh, probably because we limit uh, the target volumes and also uh, stage uh, patients we're using uh, PET-CT, and then we have modern radiotherapy techniques. Um, but uh, um, uh, now I lost uh, a thought here. Um, yeah, and <clears throat> and now we also have uh, uh, patient reported outcomes showing uh, the potential impact of the esophagitis, and we see that uh, even though. There's clearly discomfort during the, and immediately after the treatment. We also see that most patients recover very well within uh, eight weeks after completing treatment. So maybe, maybe these concerns about esophagitis, at least now using modern techniques, uh, uh, is not so important as uh, before. The other setting of thoracic brain therapy is the role in extensive stage disease. There are some data indicating that it is a benefit, but it's quite modest, and uh, we haven't uh, Im implemented it as widely as in uh, limited stage disease. 
Uh, now that uh, we have four trials establishing immunotherapy uh, combined with chemotherapy uh, as the primary systemic treatment, I think this has sparked a new interest in the role, uh, potential role of uh, uh, thoracic radiotherapy also among these patients. Um, we know that it's quite well tolerated uh, from uh, different trials, both in small cell uh, lung cancer and uh, also in non-small cell lung cancer. And uh, there are several ongoing trials that will uh, explore whether adding um, the radiotherapy also uh, in the extensive stage disease can uh, lead to a synergistic effect with immunotherapy and then prolong survival. Because uh, I think we also believe that the survival benefit of immunotherapy in this setting is uh, modest and uh, maybe uh, uh, less uh, clinically relevant than we hoped for. The final uh, uh, controversy uh, that I discussed is uh, the role of uh, PCI, the prophylactic cranial irradiation. It was first established for limited stage small cell lung cancer. Uh, then there was a Dutch trial showing a benefit uh, among patients also with extensive stage disease. But a few years uh, later, uh, I think we were all um, less certain that there was a benefit because there was a Japanese uh, study strongly indicated that the MRI surveillance is uh, as uh, good as uh, PCI. Um, there are different strategies explored, hippocampal avoidance, for example, to reduce the uh, toxicity of the PCI, uh, to phase three trials, one positive, one negative, so I think we're back to square one. Uh, but in this setting, I think there will be uh, uh, a solution because there are two large initiatives, uh, the American Maverick trial and the European Primal Lung trial that will randomize patients, uh, quite uh, large numbers of uh, patients between PCI and MRI surveillance. And in these trials, uh, patients receiving immune therapy are allowed and also hippocampal uh, sparing PCI is allowed. So uh, I'm quite sure that we will have those data in the future.